Hello everyone, um, here to show you how to install a WAMP server on Windows Server 2012 using IIS. So first off starting, I'm going to open up the server manager. From there we're going to choose our local server. Depending on if you have the server remotely connected, you might have to change some settings, but this is going to be working off a remote and local server. So I'm going to go up to manage and add roles and features. So first off we need to install IIS. To install that we're just going to go through these basic steps here. Make sure the right server is selected. Uh, there we go. So we're going to include IIS. We can add all the features for it. Um, as you know so I already have Hyper-V and file storage installed. Those aren't actually needed. Uh, servers used for other things so don't worry about that. We just need the web server. IIS. Um, for safety, I installed 3.5 feature and 4.5. They're not required, but you can install them. Okay, from here, we're going to go down, make sure that's unchecked. I, I'm going to uncheck FTP server. This is just to make sure that it doesn't affect whenever I use FileZilla, which will be used as FTP server manager for me. So now we're just waiting for the installation to finish up here. Okay, so installation has finished here. So as you notice in the server manager on the left side we have the IIS option in here. It's actually good. Um, if you want to make sure it opens, usually I go to all servers here, right click on the server, then you go to IIS right there. This will open up the IIS manager. Now, IIS, uh, the new features in IIS allows you to have the web platform installer. This is great to install because this will allow you to install PHP and MySQL. PHP MyAdmin is a third party, so you can instantly download it anywhere on the internet. You just have to know how to install it. Okay, so that's first off by finding PHP. Alright, as you notice, I pre had this installed for testing purposes, but now since we're back here, you'll have to, you'll have the little add button over here. Click add button on PHP 5.4. Do this should be, that should be the only one that you need to check for this. Then you go to MySQL. And then 5.1, most recent at this time of the video being made, just click add. So you notice there's a lot of functions that pop up here, or options in this case. Once done, you can click install. Your items will show what you have in queue, would be over here in this bottom left corner. Okay, since I had this pre-installed, they should already be running. Just to prove that they're still here, I'm going to click here. C drive, both will be installed, you will not have a full manager for them. If you know how to use command prompt, you can find them. First one you can find is MySQL command line. This allows you to log in to the MySQL, which actually, I do not know what the password is set to right at the second. Okay, so I do know the password. So if you run that command prompt, it will open up MySQL. Um, if you did not have that actually installed like that, you can go to the age 6. You'll find PHP underneath here. And here you keep on going. A lot of subfolders. You just get where you need to be. You'll find the PHP INI file right here. 
Alright, this PHP INI file allows you to change all the configurations, just the same as it would be on the Linux. All options are listed in here, so you can find whatever you need to be changed, what doesn't need to be changed. <laughs> it's all up to you on that part. Okay, and then we have the normal, since my SQL can run on 64-bit, you'll find it under the basic program file. Then my SQL server 5.1 is what we have installed. This has its own configuration file, which you can use. Now the command line that you see that is open over here is using the MySQL exe, which can be found whew, right here. And another way to get to this file is by going command line. You can either type all all the way into the directory, or you can copy the directory link here. Let me just make sure I type this right. Okay, now I'm in that folder, so now I can open up my SQL. Now, whenever you installed it, it will have asked you for the password. So you're going to have to set in the password in here, too. SP, there we go. And there you go. As you notice, I logged in. I can go show tables. So you notice there's no database selected at this time. I don't even believe I have any databases made. Okay. So that means you have the basics installed of Windows, your Apache, and your MySQL. Now we want PHP at my admin. This can actually be installed in the default site. Go to the default site, we can go manage browse here real quick. Alright. So the main website right now is just the default IIS page or IIS8 page, which can be seen here. Okay, let me just open that up just to make sure nothing's there. Okay, right, so now I'm done explore to the drive. So just to check, see if PHP is my working, I'm done create a new file. I'll rename this file is PHP info. Yep. Doop. I will have this included in the page for you, so then you can actually have this file. It's a really simple command. Especially if you want to make sure PHP is my work, PHP is working. Info. I suspect I type it right on first try here. I don't use it that much. <laughs> All right. Now I'm going to bring up something that a lot of people I I know that actually use shorthand, not longhand, as you noticed when I typed it. Just let me pop this page back up in again for you. All right. As you notice, I use longhand here. A lot of people that I know like to use shorthand, which when default installed will not work unless you change a setting, which I will find for you. After our, in this case, it's going to work since I have this pre installed. Page is just going to be double sized. Scroll back up here real quick. I'm trying to find the head. Eh, can't find it. Alright. Anyways, we have the PHP version. Just stated twice in here. If you want to, you can go here, view source. Anybody that knows PHP, oh, there we go. It didn't actually work, as you noticed. So I did not change the shorthand on this computer. Actually, that allows me to show you guys how to change the shorthand. So I'm going to leave this folder open and open up. We'll just go to desktop. All right. So back to the C drive. Program file is 86 bit. Find PHP. Version there. Okay. Now find the PHP INI file again. Okay. Now we're going to find the shorthand here. Short open tags right there. Actually, nope, not far enough here. <laughs> right, next. Come on. There we go. As you notice right here, it says off. So, if you want to, just delete this line. It'll default to its on state. Or you can type on just for safety. So, next time you can instantly find this location. So, in this case, I'm going to sit on type on. Save the file. Now, if we go back here, click refresh. View source again. As you notice, I did not have that PHP INI file anymore. Now, I should have the double headers, which I was looking for the first time. <laughs> Dude.
And I did not see the double header again, but I went through this pretty quick. Anyways, I just oh there we go. I just saw the double header. Alright, so that we have installed. Now we need PHP my admin. In this case, we're gonna go online for that. So in my case, I just go to Google real quick because I want to make sure I get the right link for you guys and the most recent version. I'll have the download links inside the notes for you. So in this case, we're getting 4.04. Okay, just gonna open up the zip file. Close that out right there. Close that out. Okay, so we're gonna reopen up this file. So we have the WW root folder. This is our default website folder. Okay. So as you notice, we have all the files for PHP my admin. So we can go like this. Go over here. We're gonna create a new folder. You can name this folder whatever you want, but I'm going to stick with the default of PHP my admin. Just for its quick or simple use of finding it. Okay, let that start up there for you. Just waiting for it to transfer. As you notice, I did not get the pop ups for, you know, for security risk. Uh, for those who do not know how to do that. Go to local server. Do, 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 do. Go over here. You see I enhance I uh, IE enhanced security configuration. Click it. For administrators, since you don't have to be an administrator to log in, you can click it off. Default users, I left it on. To be honest, it's recommended to have it on, but since this was going to the website to download it for you guys, I turned it off so you don't get a thousand pop ups. Okay, so it's done transferring. So let's try to get into this folder here. Okay, PHP my admin popped up. So on your server, it's always going to be root unless changed. And then the same password that you did whenever you installed your MySQL. And there you go. Now you can actually log into that database and view it. No configuration actually needed on PHP my admin side. Um, let me just actually make another page here just to show you a little bit. That everything is working. And I made a new folder. Yeah, we'll name it test here. Index. Okay. Now we have our index here. Uh, I'd like to make a new user here. I don't have anything to test with this. Showing you guys that it's fully working. Uh, test. Any house is fine. Password. Okay. Yeah, whatever. Let's we'll do it this way. Okay, so we're going to echo this string for you. This is just to show you that PHP is working. Next, I'm going to do the database connect. Whoops. It is standard default port. It is like normal, 3306. Depending on how your firewall settings are on your server, you will have to add a clause for it. Yep. Okay. Now we're going to connect to the server. 
There's better standards of just doing it this way, but I'm trying to do a show a quick reference for you. So, there I go. Server, our ah, host in this case. Now we need to select the database, which I tend to set this backwards actually, most of the time I do this, and I did that backwards anyways. So my SQL database select, so we're going to select our database. If you don't select database, it just means in the SQL string you're just going to have to state the database, which actually I'll show you that way instead. Alright, so I'm going to set up a SQL string, so my SQL string is going to be Select all from, okay, so we need to set the database, test, dot, okay, so what table do we want this from? Let's reopen up here to show me the tables here. Do not know if test has anything in it at the moment. Nope, it was just making sure it's working. Okay, so we'll make up a test table. Call it Tom. Number of columns, three. So I'm just going to do my default ID, okay, what is its name, and what is its value. And when making a database, you, you follow whatever standards you need at the time for it. Everybody has their different standard on things, just know the best way is the shortest way and the less, less amount of data needed. Doop. Okay, let's insert some information here. Okay, as you notice I skipped over ID, that's because I said as an auto increment it wasn't needed. And value, I'm just going to go Oops. Chin. Five. Okay, so we're done. Select. So I name this table as Tom. Okay, we're just gonna select all from it. Okay. Query. Whoops. Now my head's ahead of me. Doop. And we're going to echo each one out so everybody can see it. This is probably the longest part. You actually didn't really need to watch it all the way to this part, but I'd rather at least show you that everything is working on the server, especially since you want to use it for WAMP. Alright, so let's just echo this out. We're going to do echo each line. Make sure it has a space above it. Actually, I'm going to make sure it has two actually above it. Alright. So there's two ways we can do this. Since the fetch is still an array from the SQL query, we can actually either print it out or echo each value out. So I'm just going to do a print R here on fetch. And then save that file. There you go. So the folder I set this under. Let me go off my local host. Okay, it's in the folder test. Resource. And wait, did I even import that? No, I did not. Good if you send the data in. <laughs> Alright, as you notice, it echoed out the value for you and everything. And let me make sure this IP is correct. 94. Let me shrink that for you. Uh, Firefox should be in this window. Ninety-two dot one sixty-eight dot zero. Ninety-four. So the server pops up here. Go to that test folder for you. I do have that test folder, and phpMyAdmin is accessible from another computer.
Mm -hmm. And there you go. Uh, sorry for the really bad uh, <laughs> layout of this video, but it's the first one. Any comments would be helpful, but I hope you guys enjoyed this, and it was very uh, informative for you in having to set up that. Have a good one.